Okay, how are we all doing today, people? Taka again. So here we are at Fort Santiago in Manila. It's looking very, uh, very Mountain Dew like. So it's been a very hot and sticky day. Just walking around, seeing sights, and doing all of that. So we're about to go inside. <laughs> Yeah, so I haven't done much research on this place, but this was built in the late 1500s by the Spanish when they first came to Manila. And uh, usually when a European power came to a certain destination, whether it was in Asia or the Americas, wherever they landed, they always built a giant fort. Just like in Penang, Georgetown, Malaysia, there's Fort George, which was built by the British, but this place here is kept mostly in, in the Spanish decor. So this is my first time ever in the Philippines, and I've got to say, uh, one thing about this uh, country that uh, I don't, I'm still trying to adapt to is, is the heat. I've got to say, because usually in places like this, I take at least three showers a day minimum, but here I've had to take at least five, five showers a day. You just wake up so hot and sticky from doing absolutely nothing or just moving around. It's like you go outside for a couple of hours or whatever, you need to go back inside and have like a quick shower. I'm like vice versa before you go to bed when you wake up everything in between so this seems to be a theater or was a theater as you can see it's looking very derelict So here they would have had theatre, opera, the classic, everything. Wait, what's that? Oh, this must have been like a prison cell or something. So one thing's important when you, if you do come to, come to the Manila, or Philippines as a whole, is you've got to drink copious amounts of water I'm averaging at least six liters a day because he's sweating so much even from doing absolutely nothing shrine of Jose Rizal originally built with brick as a military barracks site of a prison cell of national hero Marta Jose Rizal charged by colonial authorities with rebellion, sedition, and the formation of illegal societies on November 3rd, the 29th of December, 1869. So this was all originally a military barracks, but they built it to be a, uh, or turned it into a prison. Damn. One thing I've also learned is out here is the humidity is unbearable. Almost got condensation inside my lens. My batteries don't last as long, hence why I have to carry all four of them out and about with me so I can do a hot swap. And even having problems charging my phone because it's so hot out here. I've had to charge it in the fridge, so I stick it in a cable a plug next to the fridge and stick it in there so it cools down because obviously if a phone's too hot it won't charge properly
Yeah, so I just came out of the uh, uh, Jose Rizal um, exhibition they had here. So, uh, for those of you who don't know, I don't even know much about this guy. Um, he's a Filipino national hero who um, basically f was the building block or the starting point of the Filipino revolution. And he was executed by the Spanish for sedition and in being a part of a secret society. So yeah, I really wanted to do a lot of filming in there, but strictly no cameras allowed at all. I mean, you can take photos, but you can't take any videos whatsoever. And there's cameras dotted all over the place, just watching you as you move. So uh, before he was executed, he was put on trial and imprisoned here in Fort Santiago, right before uh, he was taken outside the city and he was uh, executed by firing squad. So I'm now in the prison section of the fortress and if you have a look down here this looks to be the remains of, a, of an open jail so it's probably where you would do your exercise for one hour a day and then they slam you back into solitary confinement so you're only a bit of fresh air really and they are designed like something else We've got the main city on the other side. So it's over there, it's like the port area, and then further up is Tondo, where I'm staying, which allegedly is the most dangerous hoods in, the, in Manila as a whole. And then we've got the rest of the city here. If you keep going north towards that, you end up in somewhere like that. So it looks like we're about to enter the dungeons of this fort. So as you say here, you are entering hollowed grounds. Please conduct yourselves with dignity and respect at all times. Oh. Yeah. Oh, so it was used even as recent as World War II. So this whole hollowed out part, I mean, you can just see the entrance to get in. It's like a rabbit hole. So, yeah. Bodies of dead civilians inside the dungeon from 1945. Oof. So apparently what they used to do is um, they used to cram people hundreds at a time into these dungeons and just let them starve to death. Because if you know your history, the Japanese during World War II were the worst of the worst. The Germans were bad, but nowhere near as bad as the Japanese. And a lot of torture used to take place here as well. So it's crazy to think at this, there could be hundreds of people just crammed in here, imprisoned on anything really, and just literally left here to their own expenses to die. So yeah, that's me done at uh, Fort Santiago. A uh, very interesting place. If you are ever in Manila, I do recommend you go check it out. Uh, 75 pesos entry, so cheapest chips. 
and uh, you get to explore all of this and more so if you haven't already just like and subscribe to the channel support goes a long way and if you wish to make a donation feel free and see you next time